Now let's talk about day two. So the next morning I get up and I check the vehicle. I don't see anything wrong, but I know something happened. Don't know what, but it did. I found out about two and a half hours later. So we drive along and we get to um, the salt flats. And Carol wants to see the salt flats. And I told you, I took a, unknowingly took the correct uh, rest stop. They had a platform. You went up two flights. And this was viewing the salt flats. But we didn't know that. And I was having trouble with my phone. And I couldn't film. And so I didn't get out. And I always get out at the, and read all the plaques. I didn't. So I didn't realize where we were. And Carol didn't realize where we were. And Carol goes, well, I want to go, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I said, okay, okay. And um, so we left. Within five miles, I hear this bang, bang, bang. And something's pounding on my roof. It sounded like the roof. Maybe it was the inside. I had to pull over. And, of course, Carol doesn't see me. So she's still going. I pull over. Uh, everything has just gone everywhere because we went through the mountains and now we're down. Things slid forward. It was just a mess. Total chaos. I had to move everything away from the side of the door and look up. And this should never happen. Never, ever happen. But these things, that one of these came apart. And I think it's because, and I'll show you in just a second, my solar panel wiring must have hit the van so hard when I hit that and then hit this hole or whatever it was I was hitting that it popped open. And then, finally, after two and a half hours, the cables started beating the van at the top until the final cable blew off. I, I, let me show you what I'm talking about. These things should never come undone, the cables. They should never, because they're kind of locked in, but it did. And I lost one cable off of one uh, series of panels, and the other cable I had to pull inside, but there's no way. And I haven't looked to see what the damage was, but yeah, that came off, it started banging, and the other one flew. So in the meantime, Carol's still driving, doesn't know where I'm at. I'm scared to death. I'm on the side where it's fenced, hardly any room. I sh Hardly any room to pull over at the salt flats. <laughs> I just pull the other cord back in the cable inside, the one that was still there. And I'm, thank God it wasn't the engine or something else. I got back on the road. Well, about 30 minutes later, I'm trying to catch up to Carol. Carol calls. And I'm like grabbing the phone. Like, Carol, Carol, yes, yes. She goes, well, where are you? I pulled over the side. Well, well, I, ha I had to pull over, and I told her, I said, there's something wrong with my cable. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, anyway, so I was practically on top of her. We had talked a couple of minutes, and there she was at the exit where she pulled off. So then we, then we kept going. And uh, honestly, another stressful day. And um, she took the lead once during the day, and I think that was at Salt Lake City. But we couldn't communicate. Now she couldn't call me. She was afraid to call me because I can't answer the phone. You know, if you have it up to your ear, I can't hear unless it's in my ear. That's a thousand dollar fine. I I can't do that. If I accidentally get seen by the police or you know the state troopers, I'm a I'm gonna have to pay a thousand dollars. I can't do that. So we're both stressing out over this whole thing. But we did very well mileage-wise. We found a good place. Again, we didn't go as far as we wanted to. We're trying to do 600 miles a day. But that's not, ha it's pretty, that's pretty, really, really tough. So I'll talk about tomorrow, but this is what's going on on this trip. I, I think we're the worst travelers ever. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Camo.